Hi everyone! Well, certainly a long time no see video. So it's been a while since I last made a new video. And I guess a lot of people are wondering where have I been for the past two and a half weeks. I've been active on YouTube replying to comments but I haven't made any videos. Well, I'm uh, just busy working two jobs now. So I still have my lawn care service as well as a new teaching job. The same high school where I taught last year called me up um, two weeks ago and offered me a job uh, to teach grade 9 science in. Science is my forte, and I said, sure, why not? I love science, especially uh, we're going to be doing heart dissections, eye dissections, really cool, finding nutrients in food. And the opening activity I did with my 28 students is that we made candy. I'm a cool teacher. <laughs> so my candy for you guys today is a new video. And today we're going to be making tarantula feeding video 118. So it's been a long time since I last fed the teas, since uh, feeding video 117, which I think was a little bit over a month. So the teas uh, haven't changed since my last August update. The only one that passed away are my uh, tea L and I. So the only tappy I have left is uh, my tapinius. So. Today's video, uh, again, this will probably likely be two parts since it's going to be a very long video with uh, 141 plus inverts. So, we're going to start in alphabetical order. So, with that said, grab a pop of popcorn and enjoy the show. Okay, so let us start off with the tea that is not mine. <laughs> so, the very first tea I'm going to be featuring is Gregory's uh, Mature Male, Acanthoscuria theraphosphidae. Uh, formerly known as Brocklehursty, the giant white banded. Apparently it had a recent name change and I did not forget that I have a female that I have to do a second mating attempt with. So, let's see how Greg's male does. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. And it looks like he made some sperm webs, so that's pretty swell. So what I'm going to be doing for the next few days is I'm going to be feeding uh, my mature female maybe like two or three super worms a day. And probably likely this Friday I'm going to be mating this guy with my female for the second time. It went well the first time, but we'll see how that one goes. And here's Sasha, my female, Acanthoscuria theraphosphidae, formerly Brocklehursty. She's big and hairy. <laughs> she behaves exactly like Maggie does. Eats and then she takes off. So I'll give her another super worm tonight and hopefully um, get her nice and plump so well that uh, that male won't be her next menu. Alright, this is Officer Sewell. <laughs> from Sun Hill Dampor. Nice! Oh! I don't think I ever caught that last time. Yeah, anyway. And dropped in a spy collar. The Black African Thick Tail Scorpion. Or Fat Tail. With a level 5 on 5 Venom. Basically, if you got stunned by this one, you'd be in serious trouble. Gotta feel sorry for that cricket. Nice. I'm so happy to actually get that on film. And you can see... starting to ingest the uh, cricket. And they usually take about an hour to do that. Okay, so not much luck on my Fonal Palma species, but we'll try my Avix. Uh, this is the very first one I have. Um, my Avic Avic female, common pink toe, her name is Annabelle. Coincidentally, there's a movie coming up with a doll, horror movie, named Annabelle. So. Yeah, <laughs> that little shop of horrors. Got her super. Look at that. 
that nice threat posture. <laughs> yeah, had better last year. And Rose got some nice babies out of there. So did Tarantula Canada. Very easy to mate and breed. Here is Molly, my Avic Leda, the Puerto Rican pink toe. Ooh, lovey. Yeah. This is pretty much the adult size of a Leda's. They don't really get very big. Still have those pink toes, but <laughs> definitely not a pink toe-like temperament. Uh, my female is very, very fast and very defensive. Just like my tappies. Right, sorry, guys, this is going to be a little bit dark. Um, sure, one of my scorpions. This is the Babicurus gigas, the giant rusty thick tail scorpion. I'm going to see if I could try to get her out a little bit. Here she is. Ah, this time no sting. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Yeah, so this is Stacy, my big female Brachypalma albiceps, the Mexican gold red rump. My male Alberto wasn't interested in eating, so let's try to see if she'll eat. I'm sure she is. And she's going in for the kill. Uh, come on. You can do it, girl. Show everyone how an avid hunter you are. Man, she's so beautiful. She's full grown at uh, five and a half to six inches. And already started making some webs for herself, so that's pretty cool. This is Aragog, my Brachypalma abopulosum, Honduras curly hair. As you can see, she's very, very pretty. And sadly, we won't feed her. Now, why, you ask? Well, she molted, and the molt is very fresh, so I'm not going to be feeding her for at least a week. So, I'm going to show you exactly how to look for females. Uh, this is a little tutorial that I'll embed in the feeding video in case people uh, don't really know how to sex tarantulas by mold. This is possibly the most easiest way to identify them and this is almost 100% guaranteed. Well, it is 100% guaranteed. You just have to know what you're looking at. Okay, so basically here's the mold. All you have to do is open up the abdomen area which I did over here and you're going to look for a little flap. So on that specimen, you can see it right over here where my tongs are pointing to. So if you see that, then you know that you have a guaranteed female. On the specimen, I'm just going to test her temperament before I... Pinch grabber. Okay, let me pull a pinch grabber. You can see there is the epigastric furrow right here where the book lungs are. So you can see that, that is the sperm sac. So her fangs are translucent white, so that means no feeding. All right, so here is Sue the second, my successor to the late Curly Sue who passed away at age 28. That's my girl. <laughs> what a cutie. Yep, exactly like her Lisu. Very slow. Alright, Leon, I think you need a bigger cage. So, he is my male, Brachypalma erratum, the Mexican flame knee. So, pretend this cricket is a zombie, and we all know what Leon does to zombies. There we go. Enough said. <laughs> yeah, 
you can tell right away how they got the common name, the flame knee. Flame tip knees. Anyways, here's Ada. Ooh, love it. Yeah, that's the female that I got from Bruce, Arachnophiliac, one of our second uh, dealers in Canada next to Tarantula Canada and TanglesandWebs.com. This one here is Chimera. She is my Brachypelma hybrid. It crossed between a Bumgartenai and a Bohi. Love how the way she wrestles. And, you know, for a crossbred species, she looks absolutely adorable and very, very colorful and vibrant. Legs are characteristic of what you would see in a Bibomi. And you have that little darkish triangle that you would see on a Bimelia, but for a real Bumgartenai, the carapace would exa look exactly like a B. smithy. They would have completely dark with a tan outline. Too bad she's not a real Bumgartenai, but anyways, I'm pretty happy that I have her in my collection. Will the real B. Bomi please stand up? Please stand up. Well, this is my Brachypelma Bomi, the Mexican fire leg. The real deal. Right, so this is, I believe I call her Melina. Had her ever since she was a one inch spiderling. And now she's around a two inch juvie. Sporting her full adult colors. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, you'll be fed. I apologize for the, my guinea pigs weaking. They truly do sound like Pac-Man when they do that. <laughs> okay, so this cricket is playing smart. Oh, nice. That's what I wanted to show you guys. Bomies are, and Classy are one of the best eaters of my Brachypelma collection. Here's lovely Petunia. She is my Brachypelma Classy, the Mexican pink. Another savage eater. <laughs> yeah, you see that? See what I mean? Just loves it. Alright, so here's my iconic spider in my collection. And this is my YouTube channel mascot. Uh, this is Scarlet, my Brachypelma Smithy, Mexican Redney. Everyone has to have one in their collection. Uh, so, I do believe that Scarlet, oh yeah, she's in pre-molt. You can tell right away by that blue-black bald spot on her abdomen. I think she molted about a year and a half ago. I did remember making a nice uh, video footage of it. So hopefully this year I'll probably catch it. Oh yeah, she's due for molt. You can tell by her fading colors and not really interested in eating. As a tail tie, telltale signs to look for if you're teasing pre-molt, but not eating also does not apply to G. rosea, the rose hair, since <laughs> they're infamous for not eating. Alright, so Scarlet's not hungry, so let's try Athena, my other one. Here's Athena. She is my other smithy. Oh yeah, this one right away. Yeah, that's how your bee smithy should eat. So definitely Scarlet is in pre-molt 100%. Very gentle beginner species. Okay, so if I was Gomez Adams, I'd be saying to my wife, Carira. <laughs> so this is Morticia. This is my largest female Brachypelma vagans, the Mexican red rump. My other three weren't interested in feeding. 
So let's see if uh, he's going to eat. Ah, uh, yes, definitely got the super worm. She's an apparently very large. Frankie Palmo, this is definitely my largest one in my collection. There we go. She's at least a good seven, seven and a half inches. I don't know what's going on with her abdomen there. But she's pretty healthy and that's all that counts. Okay, so I missed this one. Uh, this is my female, Brachypalma verdesi, Mexican Rose Gray. So, let's try to recreate that with Kalinka, my female. Seems to have freshly molted. Yeah, I think she did molt. That's true, what she looks like. You can make out her colors. Yeah, there's a molten back there. Okay, last but not least is my unidentified Brachypalma species. I believe it could be a Kallenbergi. Uh, which was discovered six years ago. And like most bracket palmas, they usually have a voracious appetite. So, let's see how well that this one does. Yeah, she could use a bit of fattening. Oh, nice! You see that there? That's what you call an impressive attack. Sweet. This one here is my Saratajaris Marshali, the straight horned baboon. Hopefully she's gonna poke her head. And there we go. Pet hole, so we don't really get to see her very much. Okay, so I'm really, really proud to show this one. This is possibly my most haunted enclosure ever. <laughs> Alright, so this is Julin. Uh, she is my five and a half inch female Chinese fawn, Kilobrachis guanasiensis. I had her three years now, ever since she was a one inch spiderling and now she's like a six inch beast. So I'm probably trying to draw her closer to the camera, see what she actually looks like. I don't think I show her well in my tour video. Oh, she's coming. Ah, oh, she's threading. How nice. That's typical for your Aquilobrachis. Whoa! Well, she was hungry. Alright, this one here is Mystery, my Scytheracanthus Livingstoni, or... I think now I might need to change the labels to a Phonopalma Kurirufum. The Livingston's Tea. She's a big six inch female. Let's see if she's going to eat. And beautiful. Just like that. And thanks to Shanrock777 or Sea Shanty for giving me the name Mystery. Certainly was a mystery to find out what she really is. But everyone, the moment you've been waiting for. 
So this is my Siphonesia species, the black trapdoor. This is Terra the Terrible. I'm anxious to see if this one is going to eat again. Well, you know where the T is now. Oh, sorry, the Megalomorph. Nice! Woohoo! Best attack yet, so far. Ah, what a perfect opportunity to film my Ephobopus Moranus, the skeleton. Ooh, would you look at that. Yeah, this is Bridget the Third. Yeah, it's like a one inch sling doing incredibly well. Sweet. So now we'll try another one. Cleveland. <laughs> hey, fellas. This is my Euphobus Refessens, the Burgundy Skeleton. <laughs> I sound too much like Beavis, not Cleveland from Family Guy, but anyways, I think this is a suspect male, anywho. So, let's see how well he eats. This one has never ever failed to eat. Always very hungry. Hasn't molted in quite some time, so... Oh, yeah, you see that? A very nice skeleton species. Uh, he's coming out to say hello. Yeah, very underrated in, in the tea hobby. The more common ones you would see are the E. Moranus and the Ippoposaonathus, the skeleton. A uh, blue fang skeleton. Not the burgundy. Burgundy is not very common, as well as the emerald as well. Definitely recommend picking these guys up if you want to buy a new tarantula and you want something that's not very visible but like really great appetites. Suggest getting these guys right here. Superb eaters, as typical for these uh, members. Alright, so this one here is my Euathlus Pocormaclassi, the Chilean purple green femur, or green blue femur. Four and a half inch female. I might leave her as in an update to see how well she's doing in my care. Uh, not the most hungry of eaters, but definitely very eye-catching when I first saw her at the expo. And, and lucky enough that she was available at TC and I picked her up for about 80 bucks. Alright, here's Yasmin. She is the very first tarantula that I bought from Tarantula Canada. She is my female PZB, Pink Zebra Beauty. Doing very well as well. Still has that piece of old molt stuck to her. But I'm not going to amputate it. I think she's just doing okay for the time being. And if it wasn't for her, I would never have known Tarantula Canada. And ever since I'm a proud and happy customer of them for the past seven years now. I've owned her for seven years. Wow, time sure flies by very quickly. Okay, so this is definitely not a tarantula, but I thought it'd be cool to you know, feature her in my feeding videos. Very, very hungry. So this is my high yellow hypo fat-tailed gecko. Female named Espa. Okay, what I'm doing now is dipping them in calcium powder so that way you know, she gets her calcium supplements. Not sure if she sees it. There we go. Good girl. Mm. 
Mmm. Super worms. Give me more, John. Okay. I'll give, give him one more. One more because I'm only limited to so many super worms. Let's see if she can get it herself. There we go. I just love her reptilian like eyes. I used to own fat, gil fat tailed geckos in the past, and they had the really cute brown eyes, but never. One's like snake eyes like these ones. I can tell she's very healthy. She's got a moist hide, a little water bowl, cave that she likes to hide under. She's all set. All right, now for the big black tea in the hobby. Uh, this one here is my Grandma Sola Pulcra, Brazilian black. This is my mature female named Ebony. A very nice and fitting name for uh, this one. Oh. Now this is my 16, 17 year old specimen. I had her for 14 years and I got this one as a 2 inch juvenile. So, yeah, maybe 17. Here is Roy, and he looks very impressive after his molt. Now this is a male Brazilian black. Grandma Sola Pulcra. So let's see if uh, he got his appetite back. Come on, Roy. There we go. What a good boy. Amazing. Alright, so here is one of my Chaco Goldeny females, Grandma Solo Poker Piece. This is the largest one named Charlotte. She's definitely very bulky. So let's see if she'll grab the super worm. There we go. Alright, here's Princess Peach, my second Chaco Goldeny female. Grandma Solo Poker Peas. Not a problem with her. Now I'll see if her sister Wendy will have a go. Alright, it's Wendy's turn. Oh, nice! Savage beast. Starting to get chunky like the bigger one, Charlotte. Gorgeous. Gorgeous tea. Alright guys, this is the tea that you're all familiar with. This is the common rose here, Grandma Sola Rosea. So this is the female that I got from Angelo. Very nasty one, but certainly has a good appetite. Okay, so this is Michaela. This is my other rose here. A normal form. There we go, just like my other one that you just seen in the video. Talia wasn't interested in eating, but that's typical for these specimens not to eat very much. They're very, very slow growing species. Okay, let's try some red phase now. Alright, so this is my Grandma Sola Rosea red phase. Uh, this is my juvenile male named Morris Rose after my late grandfather. So. Let's see what's going to happen. Oh, there, there we go. You see that? A little prodding would help him. 
Next one here is a Haplopelma lividum, cobalt blue. A little spiraling I named Midna the second. What I'm using here is a carpet beetle larva. And I think she attacked it. He or she. Yeah, she's standing upright, so... I could assume she got it. Uh, now, here's a very good looking one. Uh, this one here is the Haplopus species Columbia Large pumpkin patch. I named this one Kina, confirmed female. She absolutely nailed it. And I really love the colors on the specimen. She's probably likely about an inch and a half. The large species gets to having a four inch leg span versus the smaller one that only gets up to having a two inch very easy to care for, similar to your Cereocosmus uh, dwarf species. You like to burrow and give them like semi-dry to semi-moist environments and you'll be fine. Very good eater and really hardy. Not too aggressive at all. Uh, when I owned her, I never had her throw threat displays, but she's incredibly skittish. Okay, this one here, Hysterocrates gigas, the kangaroo, Cameroon red baboon. There we go, sweet. Looking for a mature male if anyone has one. Would like to breed with this girl. Here's Dora, my Lassiodora difficilis, the Brazilian fire red bird eater. It's doing very well. Uh, this one here is a Lassiodora fracta, the Brazilian smoky gray bird eater. And with all Lassadoras, they always eat. She's no exception. Three and a half inch female. Here's Necroth, my male Lassadora Klugi, Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. Eats like a champ. Or like you say, like a boss. All right, now this one here is a Lassiodora parahybana, the salmon pink bird eater. Typically in the hobby, we call them LPs. Ooh, nice crunch. One of my females. Oh, no way. No way. Well, Daisy molted. And she's bigger and better. Oh my god, she's huge. Well, at least to me she is. Yeah, she's very nice and chunky. Okay. The molt looks a couple of days old, so maybe I could try to feed her, see if she'll eat. If I can find a superworm for her, that's the question. Right over here. Okay, guys, get ready. For some LP magic. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll bring her in the light so you can actually see what she looks like. She's ever gorgeous. And you can tell how these are Parahybana. Notice that they have 
pinkish hairs on the abdomen. That's the way to tell. If you have a difficilis, then you would probably have a lot of whitish hairs on the abdomen. Man. She's, she's looking really good. Really plump. This one here is my little Lacerdorides striatus, the Goliath stripe leg. That I named it Vera. Nice. Alright everyone, so these are scorpions you probably wouldn't own as your very first one. These are very toxic and potentially deadly. Uh, these are Deathstalker scorpions, Laris quinquastriatus. So, let's see if you can try to feed one on camera. So way in the corner, you can see one of them in there. So, I'm going to be very, very daring and see if I can coax that cricket into the hole so that we can see an epic attack. There we go. There we go. Now that's what you want to see. Sweet. Over here is my Monocentropus balfouri, the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. She's coming out. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful spider. And if you want to see what Monocentropus balfouri look like. There we go. Very blue.